Hello and welcome to Three Things I Know For Sure, where we talk to the most amazing experts on the planet about something they know for sure. I'm talking 100% facts and they have to be passionate about it and they have to know it in detail and I'm going to press them on it. But I don't know what they're going to talk about. You find out when I find out. Today on the show, we have David Sandstrom, who is the Chief Marketing Officer for Klarna, a leading global payments and shopping provider. With a career spanning over two decades, David has had a wealth of experience in both advertising and marketing industries. And since joining Klarna in around 2018, David has been responsible for developing and executing the company's global marketing strategy and help establishing Klarna as a disruptor in the fintech industry, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody, welcome to the show. David, David, how are you, sir? I am pretty good. Thanks for having me. I'm thrilled you're here. Where are you today? I don't even know. You're you're somewhere not local. I'm in Stockholm. That's why it's so dark outside. It's still <laughs> like, extremely look dark. Look at our difference in color temperatures. Like it is clearly all all night all the time uh, at this point, right? What's yep. the is the is the sunlight? That, is it... the, that is unfortunately a very accurate description. It is <laughs> it is night all the time. <laughs> That's horrible. I'm excited that you're here on the show, David. I will tell you. Most times I don't have marketers on the show. Uh, we have marketing geniuses on the show uh, that are not necessarily in the industry, but speak about the industry. So I mm -hmm. am so excited to actually have a real professional uh, marketer on the show. What is your topic for today? Living a healthy life before 8 a.m. Oh, wow. Before <laughs> I don't do much before 8 a.m., David, but, oh, but, but I mean, getting a good start to the day is absolutely key to performance. Okay. And, and I've tried everything. Like people usually approach me saying, hey, have you heard about this? Have you tried this? Yes, is usually the answer. I've tried everything. And, wow. and I've actually come to the conclusion that there are a couple of things that I really need to do before, before 8 a.m. Or right. in some cases, not need to do. A couple of years ago, I completely changed my lifestyle. Okay. Pressure that I'm under as a global CMO for a, you know, Huge company, 25 countries, 150 million consumers. I travel all the time. Um, and I just ran out of energy a couple of years ago. Mm. The fix for that was to really change my lifestyle. So I read up a lot about like, okay. how do you actually optimize both your body and your mind for optimal performance? Um, and currently I live a, I wouldn't say a fairly healthy lifestyle, but I know a lot about how I should live my life. I don't always apply the practices. Um, but I'm very, very good at optimizing both my sure. body and mind. I want to hear idea number one. Okay. So the first thing is actually something that you shouldn't do, um, which is basically to eat. So many people, they wake up, they jump to get to coffee, they jump to start eating. The worst thing you can do in the morning is to eat. Like you need to give your system the opportunity to actually get a slow start to the morning. You don't want to overload your digestive system with food. You don't want to have any caloric intake in the morning whatsoever. So the first thing you read really no food, no food whatsoever, <laughs> David, no food whatsoever. Wait, you know this for sure. No food. A hundred percent. Like no what food. you should do. Don't eat for three hours before you go to sleep and don't eat for two hours after you wake up. Oh, oh I see. Okay. And so I usually wake up at about 6 a.m. So whatever you do, don't eat food. There are loads no. of benefits to that, right? Loads of All benefits. right, I want to hear you the get benefits, a slow sure. start to, You get a slow start to the morning, but also the fact that usually people overeat calories, right? Cutting out a meal a day is a really important thing. Like if you want to live a long and healthy life, you know, a caloric deficit is really at the core of what you need to do. So do not eat. Don't put anything in your mouth. And that is usually why people you, also are you... unhealthy when they're traveling, right? Because when you're traveling, you stay at a nice hotel, you eat the breakfast buffet, do not Amazing. do that. Do not do that. <laughs> Drink water in the morning. This takes a lot of, uh, wow, I don't know that I could do that. So just don't say, so I say I got up at seven. I'm not eating until 10. Exactly. Do not eat in the morning. <laughs> it's fairly easy, right? You say it like, so cavalier, like it's easy. Like people love a breakfast. No, that, no breakfast. The, the thing with most of these things is they're easy to understand and they're hard to do. Ah. Right? Yes. Everything ranging from feeling good, weight loss, all of that. Like people usually know what to do in order to lose weight or stay healthy or get a good night's sleep or get a good start to the day. But the thing is, they don't apply it, right? And this thing is actually fairly easy to apply because it's all like, don't, don't shove anything in your mouth. Like within two hours, anyone can do that, right? That's, anyone okay. can I love that. that's number one. All right, easy number stuff. two. Okay, number two, take an ice cold shower in the morning. It is absolutely, it's a, you have to. And no you food afterwards. <laughs> exactly, no food afterwards. So an ice cold shower, or rather, 
controlled stress is one of the most important things in order to uh, prepare your body for real stress, right? So the nervous system is almost like any other muscle, right? You can train the nervous system and strengthen the nervous system. But in order to do that, you have to apply stress to the body. That is why ice cold showers or ice cold baths are so important because you control the body, you control the stress and you strengthen the system. So they've done so many studies of this as well. Wow. Like if you apply that stress to your body in the morning, you're so well prepared for real stress. You have a bad boss, a bad meeting, a bad client, whatever it is, is you know, stressful situation with your spouse, with your kids. You are way more prepared if you have stressed your body with an ice cold shower in the morning. So take a one to three minute ice cold shower every morning. But what's the research that suggests that this stressing your system helps you better combat stress during the day? The thing here, I've done tons and tons of research is like, is there any way to prepare yourself? Like, how can you be less stressed throughout the day? And, and the, the almost counterintuitive answer to that is stress yourself, like train your nervous system, get your nervous system ready for stress. That really helps you, you do that. Because the unfortunate truth is that the vast majority of us live a very, very comfortable life. Like, like you, you have breakfast, you have a big breakfast, you have a nice, long, warm shower, you sleep in, it is a very comfy life. So when adversity happens throughout the day, or when stress, you're not prepared for that. So really, this, you know, micro training of the nervous system in the morning, that is something I truly recommend everyone doing. It's become tremendously popular here in Sweden. Like yeah, if you I know. go out, if I've you read, go out here in the morning, on, on... you see people jogging with big axes. And first you think like they're mass murderers running around here in the city. They're not, right? They're they're running to the closest lake and they're, you know, making a hole for themselves in the ice and they're jumping in for for a minute. And that is the morning routine. Well, those are two really I I, I'm afraid to hear number three because I don't know what my life is going to be like. <laughs> oh, I want to hear number three, though. They, they, they're fairly easy, though, but I okay. am a big believer in breath work, right? Breath. So really training your breath, working with your breath, focusing on your breath, understanding that the breath is something that is, I actually, it sounds simplistic, but I do think it is both undervalued and under research, what breath does to you, focusing on your breath, understanding your breath and understanding how the breath really is connected to the nervous system is something amazing. Like monks in Indonesia that can actually control their entire nervous system with the breath. Absolutely mind blowing. Um, so I really try to dedicate one to two minutes, like, because if I say I want to do it for five minutes, I never do it. It becomes a hassle, but everyone has one minute in the morning, like 60 seconds like 60 seconds of breath work in the morning, really doing that. And I mean, a lot of research shows that if you just focus on your breath for, you know, six big inhales and six big exhales uh, every day, that has a, a, a fundamental impact on your well-being and, um, and on your nervous system. Can you compare your, these three, uh, your three things to when you didn't do it beforehand and now you are fasting at the beginning of the end of the day and you're cold showering or whatever it is that you do that sort of strike, you know, stress in your body. And then, and then the breathing, how, how has it changed how you've behaved and how you've been able to perform? Yeah. But I mean, the, the performance goes, this might sound crazy, but, but I think um, that a, a lot of us probably listening as well, you, especially, I mean, we operate in the business world as almost an athlete, like a superstar athlete does in, um, you know, in, in, in a sporting context, right? So, but we never prepare ourselves for that. So the way I think it's changed me, it's really, you know, um, the, the robustness of how I approach a day, uh, the way I carry myself, the way I show up, I do think it has, it has made a tremendous change. And I think, you know, working on the level um, that we work on requires a certain amount of preparation. Like I, I worked in the industry for 35 years. I never prepared for anything. I obviously read some emails. I read some books and stuff like that. But the real, you know, seeing yourself and appreciating yourself as almost an athlete has made a huge difference. Like, and, and I do think that the, especially obviously the mental pressure that, that many of us are under requires that kind of thinking. I mean, it, it, it sounds like I have a big ego and, and no, no, like, I, it, it's I not, that, that is not what it's meant. It's just like 
the amount of pressure that we're under require a different kind of preparation than, than what I was used to. I yeah, haven't appreciated that. I think it's interesting to think about, gosh, you know, you world-class athletes really do uh, plan and prepare immensely for their moment uh, in the, you know, you know, at their actual, you know, competitions, we are as business leaders every day having to sort of stress ourselves to figure out what it is that can, how can we deliver? And then certain bigger days that are more important, but yeah. um, to, to think of yourself in training, I kind of like that thought of a uh, marketers, you know, endlessly preparing for that, that uh, world-class athlete level deliverable. Yeah, um, but, but maybe, also like look, look at the stats, like mental health issues, not only in the US, but globally are like, it is one of the, you know, biggest pandemics we're seeing. Like maybe you shouldn't talk about a big pandemic in times like these, but <laughs> if, if you disregard the, 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 the other pandemic, this is a huge issue. Mm. And I do think it is because we don't take care of, uh, of ourselves as athletes do, right? Many of us, we stay up late and do emails. We go drinking Friday and Saturday. We go out with a client on Tuesday. We sleep for six hours and think that makes sense. We wake up and have a big breakfast and a warm shower. Like the, <laughs> you describe the, my week. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but the thing is, like again, no comparison to that. But if Michael Jordan told you that is how his week, uh, how how his week looked, like you wouldn't believe it. Like, yeah, you're right. I'll drink on Friday, different. Saturday, staying up late, like watching a TV show on Game of Thrones until 2 a.m. Like that is not how it works. And I do think we do not have the mental toughness and robustness that it takes to, to mm. navigate the modern world. And I think we're seeing that at scale in the mental health pandemic that we're seeing. Fascinating to think about that. I Gosh, I never even considered how would a world-class student prepare themselves for success in a classroom? Mm -hmm. What would that look like? And what way could we take the, the metaphor of a world-class athlete and apply that to learning? Yeah. Or, uh, uh, or even it, it could be any, any responsibility or commitment that you're going to make um, that is, how do I prepare for this at a world-class level? I, if, you, if you're okay talking about Klarna for a moment, I'd love to hear how you, are, how you entered into this entered into this particular job and how you saw the vision for where it needed to go and how you prepared like a world-class athlete for that that climb which frankly i think is was a big climb from what the brand was to where it is now yeah so i mean the, the short version my background it comes from um, i've always been very very interested in psychology like that that is that has really been at the heart of what i'm interested in like the human mind why people behave like they do so i, I didn't want to become too theoretical or too academic so marketing was a perfect playground for me because marketing really is about uh, you know um, understanding, you know, understanding people like why, why does someone choose brand X over brand Y? Why does someone become loyal to a brand or disloyal to a brand? Why does someone decide to pay more for a brand than another? So I started my journey working a lot with consumer insights and strategy because that is really, you know, that still gets me going. And I worked my way through the ranks at different agencies and different companies and ended up at Klarna just because of the tremendous challenge there. I mean, Klarna sits at the intersection of a lot of really, really interesting things. So Klarna handles money. Money is extremely interesting, both from a psychological view, but also really in general, like what will happen will money, uh, with money? Will it be fully digitalized? Will Bitcoin happen? Blockchain? Like what is going to happen within that space? It sits, you know, it has a lot to do with banking. Banking, obviously, in turmoil right now in many ways, but also an industry that needs disruption, right? It has been the same for a couple of hundred years. Things need to change in our banking works. And then shopping and e-commerce, right? E-commerce is going to change or e-commerce is changing the way that commerce works in general. So I was really fascinated about the challenge to join a company that really sits at the intersection of these three big things, money, banking, and e-commerce, right? Um, and when I joined the company, the challenge was basically how can we create a brand that connects to people um, in a completely different way? The financial industry and to some extent the tech industry, but mostly the financial industry, in, especially driven by the banks and credit card companies, is the most distrusted and hated industry in the world. Like more than media, more than politicians, it is almost an achievement by the old banks and credit card companies to be disliked uh, on this level, right? So 
the thing um, that I had to do was really to say, hey, Klarna, we want to operate in this industry because it's extremely interesting, extremely important. It really sits at the heart, almost at, how, at you know, how, how, how countries work. It sits, you know, really, it's a cornerstone of, of GDP, basically. But we cannot revolutionize an industry if we're not liked, right? If we're not respected, if we're not right, trusted. Course, so it was basically welcome, taking something right. that is extremely distrusted and saying, we're not like them, we're something else, right? Mm. And I usually say that is fairly easy because everyone you're competing against is in that industry, is distrusted, is hated, right? So the only thing you have to do is not to do it like them. Like if you're Nike or Adidas or Under Armour, like every other competitor is fairly cool, does it really well, you know, it, it's almost a margin call, right? How, how do you how do you go from 99 to 100, right? right? Here it's from zero to one, right? Every bank is blue. Every bank is male. Oh. Every bank talks down, talks down on people. Every bank has a shitty business model that is not really aligned with their customers, right? It's not, it's not rocket science. Like being a CMO of Nike is a completely different ballgame, right? <laughs> different what would job, I do? Right? Like they've done everything already, right? Uh, David, you did wonderful on three things. I, we, you were fabulous. Thank you for everything you offered. It was brilliant. Uh, I mean, thanks was, for having me. This was I, a lot of fun. I loved it. I loved it. No food in the morning or at night, but three hours before you go to sleep. No hot showers and breathing at least for 60 seconds. There you go. I think You're all I, set. I think I could do these. I think I could try. Can I just ask one more question? How long do I have to try it to, sh to, to see the benefit of it? Like if you, if you put your mind to it, you will see the benefits within a week. Okay. I'm going to really try this, David. David, I loved you being on Three Things. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. You were just fabulous. Thanks for having me. You're welcome, sir.